Hello all, my name is Krishna and welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, today in this particular video, we are going to see how we can use SVM in our convolution neural network to do image classification. Now, why I'm making this particular video, guys, because recently one of my subscribers had actually gone for an interview where they had asked specifically to implement a image classification problem using SVM. Now, if you don't know the importance of SVM or if you don't know a theoretical understanding of the SVM, guys, I've already uploaded videos on that on my complete machine learning playlist. Please make sure that you watch the theoretical video. It will be very, very important to understand that how convolution neural network probably will be using SVM in order to do the classification. And why this particular statement is important because SVM is a very good algorithm for doing classifications. It is also used in object detections and all. And the reason why I'm making is because from tomorrow, I'm actually going to start object detection playlist. So it will be in complete depth. I know it, it has taken some time. I was preparing, I was preparing a lot of topics with respect to that. And from tomorrow, it will get uploaded in my complete deep learning playlist. So please make sure that you get this idea about SVM because the first algorithm that we will be discussing is something called as RCNN. And RCNN uses SVM over there as your classification in the final layer, you know for classifying your categories. So there we'll be using SVM. So in order to make it simple, let's try to do an image classification. And since this was an interview question also, so I'm trying to make this particular video. Now for this particular problem statement, I've again taken a simple data set of cats and dog. The reason why I've taken is that this is a binary classification. For multi-class classification, also SVM can be used, okay? And probably we just have to change the loss function and uh, some of the uh, parameters that we have to use that is called as regularization parameter. So let's go ahead. Remember this uh, TensorFlow version that I'm using is 2.2.0. This I'm executing in my local environment. So if I go and show you my GPU over here, right? So this is my GPU. Uh, the GPU name is NVIDIA Titan RTX and you can see how much dedicated GPU memory usage I have somewhere around 24 GB. Now you may be thinking that what is this first code? Remember guys, this first code basically says that I am not going to use my entire sh GPU shared memory. I'll say that try to just use it till maximum 50 percentage. Okay. So here it is. Uh, I'm going to just use it till maximum 50 percentage. Okay. So, uh, and I've also limited the growth till 0.5 percent. Okay. So this is just a code which I've taken from a GitHub and probably I'm just trying to make my GPU memory growth maximum to 50 percent. So I'll try to execute this. Okay. Um, okay. An interactive session is already active. So let me restart the kernel. Okay. Probably I'll restart the kernel. I'll start from starting. I hope everybody knows about cats and dog. Obviously in this particular data set, you will be having cats and dog separate data set. Okay. So here I'll just execute this. So this is my first statement. As soon as I execute this, now you'll be able to see that whatever model training I'll be doing. And this will also give you an idea that how fast NVIDIA Titan RTX can actually do the model training here. I have total somewhere around 8,000 images also. Okay. So still the memory growth is not there. So let's go ahead and try to see. Now here I'm uploading image data generator. Image data generator is usually for uh, data augmentation uh, techniques. Like we'll try to augment that data so that it will create some more additional data in the memory. And over here you can see that the TensorFlow version that we have is 2.2.0. Okay. So this is basically the image data generator, which I'm actually uh, applying some kind of data uh, augmentation techniques. Again, the entire code will be given in the GitHub. Okay. So here you have rescaling value, share range, zoom range, horizontal flips. So some of the techniques I've applied, I've just taken it from Keras. And then I'm actually reading, um, you know, I'm, I'm actually reading the training data set. Remember the target size I've given is 64 cross 64. Batch size is 32. Class mode is binary because just I have two classes. If it is not, if it has multiple categories, I have to consider it as categorical. Okay. Now remember one thing, just one more interview question. Why do we don't apply image data generator in test data set? So this is an interview question. Please try to comment in the in the comment section of this particular video. Okay. After that, in the test data, I'm just rescaling it. See, rescaling is done over here. Apart from that, in the training, we have applied some data augmentation technique. So why we do not apply data augmentation technique in test data, okay? So after applying scaling, which will basically scale down the data into the same scale. After this, you'll be able to see that I'm reading from this particular directory with the target size, batch size, and class mode as binary, okay? So I'm also reading the test data. I hope this is pretty much simple. And here you can see that the total number of images that I have, 8,000 images in training data set, 2,000 images in 
test data set okay and if you go and see my folder probably my folder will look like this so this is my data set train dogs cats something like this okay so here it is after this what i'm going to do is that i am going to um, uh, import two layers that is convolution 2d layer and dense layer obviously for image classification i'm just going to create a plain neural network okay and trust me svm works well with respect to a lot of tasks and the reason again i'm telling you why i'll show you because in tomorrow's session probably if i'm discussing about rcnn there you'll be seeing that svm is getting applied not in uh, rcnn but in faster rcnn dot so you may be thinking how svm can be used and here i'm actually showing you the practical implementation so here <coughs> what i'm going to do i'm going to uh, import the layer one is con2d and one is dense layer con2d is for the convolution operation dense layer is basically to add the nodes uh, uh, with respect to the hidden layers okay now this is very very important let's come back to this particular thing in the later on stage okay why i have imported this l2 regularizer okay l2 norm so let's create a cnn layer so here it is my first of all i'm adding a sequential layer then I'm saying CNN dot add. I'm adding a con 2D layer. See, I'm adding a con 2D layer with filters at 32. Padding a same kernel size is three, and the activation function is ReLU. Uh, then strides is equal to two, and input shape is equal to 64 cross 64. So this is one. Uh, I have basically added a convolution layer. Then I'm adding a max pooling layer because in a CNN we add the combination of con 2D and max pooling, right? Unless and until it is not a 3D image. Right. If it is a 3D image, I will basically add con 3D. Right. So there is also that particular functionality. So again, I have added one more convolution layer. Again, one max pooling layer. Over here, you can see the filter size is same. The padding is also same, and the kernel size is also same. Okay. Now here, I have actually flattened the layer. Now this is very very important. Okay. This is very very important. Just have a look. After this flattened layer, I have added one dense layer. Okay, so dense layer I have actually added over there. Units 128 is my hidden neurons. Activation function is ReLU. Okay, now let's go ahead. In this last layer, before if I want to create a normal CNN with the sigmoid activation function, I used to write CNN dot add tf dot keras dot layers dot dust dense unit is equal to one since it is a binary classification, and activation is equal to sigmoid. We used to like write this. Now if I really want to convert this as svm okay so what i'll do is that i'll write cnn dot add dense of one kernel underscore regularizer see there is a parameter which is called as kernel underscore regularizer and inside this regularizer i may use l1 norm or l2 norm currently i'm using l2 norm and for svm if i if i really need to know about svm first of all you have to see this theoretical video guys then only you'll be able to understand what is norms and all okay so this is a regularization parameter so here I've given an L2 norm with 0 0.01 value. Again, you can give 0 0.001 also. And obviously this is basically verified with multiple values, not only one value. And then the activation function that I'm going to apply is linear. Now why I'm actually applying the activation function as linear? Because when I'm applying a SVM for binary classification, we use something called as linear SVM. Linear SVM basically means we'll try to draw a line between them. We'll try to find out uh, the other margin lines and then we'll try to divide that particular classes, right? So that we are using it. And in this case, we are using linear SVM. Always remember for binary classification, we always use a linear SVM. Suppose if you want to do for multiple classification, there also I'll be doing the changes. Now see, for multi-classification, the same layer will be like this. Suppose I have uh, probably, I have four categories. So I'll use four categories. The kernel regularizer will be almost same. L2 or normalization, but the activation function that will be applying is softmax. Okay, so this is basic difference uh, between uh, this two. Uh, this is for linear SVM for binary classification. So here I'm just going to write a uh, for binary classification. Okay, so binary classification. I'm doing it. Okay, and this is for multi classification. We'll come to this compile now. This was one of the changes that we did in the last layer to make it as a linear SVM. Then finally, when we do compile, I'll just execute this. Okay, this has got executed over here. You can see now if I go and see my CNN dot summary here, you can see the entire information about my CNN. Now, when you are doing the compile, the next change, first of all, you'll be using an optimizer. And this is very, very important, guys. When we use a loss function as hinge at that time, it is basically going to consider as an SVM. So two changes. One is the loss and the other one is basically the regularizer. If we'd add these two parameters, automatically your final layer will become an SVM layer. Okay, 
specifically linear SVM for binary classification. And again, the metrics will be accuracy. After this, I'm fitting on my training set, validation set, and epoch sustain. I've just taken epoch sustain. Uh, probably I'll, I'll uh, probably run it to uh, 15. Let's run it, uh, run the epoch to 15. Now, let's execute this. Now, once I'm executing this, probably you'll be seeing the epochs have started, and execution is quite fast in NVIDIA Titan RTX. But now, if I open my ti NVIDIA Titan RTX, now you'll see this. This memory probably will be increasing after some point of time. Okay. So it'll be increasing, it'll be going unless, uh, till this half, max till this particular half, okay? So GPU is getting used quickly, the execution is happening, fine. Now, let me, till the training is going on, let me just make sure that what compile method you have to use for multi-classification. For multi-classification, your loss function will be squared hinge, okay? For binary classification, it'll be hinge, and for multi-classification, it'll be square hinge with the same regularization parameter. Okay, and the activation function is also changing in multi-classification like softmax. In binary, it is linear. So I'm not going to use this unless or until I'm solving a multi-class classification. So let's see, uh, the training is happening. You can see the accuracy is increasing, the validation accuracy is also increasing. Let me see whether my GPU memory usage is increasing or not. So probably, uh, since we just have 10,000 uh, images, uh, I think it is quickly happening. It is not giving that much strain on the um, memory. If I see CPU is also less, if I see GPU, it's also less. It's somewhere around five to six percent. I think it is being able to handle it. Okay. Now you see this uh, sixth epoch is done. Still, we are getting good accuracy. Validation accuracy is somewhere around seventy-six. Uh, training accuracy is somewhere around seventy-two, which is very, very good. Okay. So let's just train happen. Probably in another uh, five to six minutes. But just understand. Uh, thanks to Nvidia for giving this particular GPU. I can really, really quickly check out. Uh, you know, see some of the things and all. Obviously, for bigger problem statement, it will be taking time. But uh, for the other statements, like simple, if I want to check something like a binary classification and all, uh, I also tried some object detection technique and probably it also took time, okay? So what I'll do is that when I'm actually solving some object detection problem, I'll be using Google Colab Pro, okay? By changing the VPN, I'll try to do something like that and uh, try to increase. But let's see, how is the accuracy going on? 74, 74 find 76 validation accuracy is going on well now it is about to complete a 10th epoch so 7511 77 percent good it's going on uh, let's see whether the loss is decreasing yes loss is also decreasing uh, previously loss was uh, validation loss is also decreasing it's going on well uh, that basically means our training is happening absolutely fine with the help of svm and we are doing a pretty good work and this was the interview question that was asked to that subscriber he got really confused for this specific question, you know, and probably uh, I think now uh, he told me, so I plan to make this particular video so that if you get this kind of interview question, definitely just tell them that what kind of regularizer you may be using and the loss function. Only these two things will change when you're using an SVM. And the faster RCN, I think fast RCNN, right, uh, uh, for the object detection also uses SVM as a classification, you know. I'll also show you some of the research paper and some of the advantages of SVM using in that it'll work very very well uh so 77 over here 78 over here it's look good probably if i run it for 20 epochs i think i'll be getting more than 80 percent but let's limit it till 15 and let's then see uh, how our loss and accuracy is getting plotted so last epoch final epoch and we have done it right i think last epoch uh, loss is increased i guess no come on it'll decrease it'll decrease Yes, now here it is, uh, your accuracy 78 and validation accuracy is also 78. So let's plot this, your log loss. So it looks good, right? It is coming down. Your validation loss had some zigzag, but it is coming down. Your accuracy is also coming up. You can see both are going together. So this is amazing, right? So what I'm going to do is that let's test for some of the images like this. Okay, this, this code is basically to save the image, uh, save the H5 file. Let me save the H5 file, okay? Um, now suppose I want to check it for one of the data sets for dogs and let's see what is the output that is given. So what I'm doing is that I'm loading the data set. I am converting this into an array. I'm dividing by 255. Why I'm dividing? Because understand we have to rescale the data, right? So divide by 25, uh, 255. That is my maximum number of pixels. And then when I'm doing the prediction, I can see my result. My result is positive. Okay. My result is positive over here. If I try to do it for the same cat data set. So here you see this. Once I execute the cat data set, what will be my result be coming? It is coming as negative. So I've written clearly that if result of zero is less than zero, 
then the image classified is cat else it is a dog so if i'm executing some other dog suppose this 474007 uh, dog and if i go and see the uh, result so this has got incorrectly classified see this probably i want some other thing like uh, 41015 so if i go and see my result now it is coming as positive so anything that is coming in the positive way that is basically considered as dog now if i execute this you can see the image classified is dog if you want to see this 4015 let me just uh, probably open open my image so i will open my image uh, and i'll show you the image don't worry about it i'll show you the image data set uh, test from the test it is dogs 4015 right so 4015 is this specific dog so this is the dog you can see the dog uh, image name 4015 it's a cute dog right uh, so yes uh, i hope you have understood this how we have used svm but the main thing is that you should understand that what are the changes that i have made in the loss function and probably in the regularizer this is the most important thing that you need to understand yes i'll be giving you this entire information just try to do with some other uh, data set for multi class classification also i have added the code just try to add this in the last for multi classification that's it based on the number of outputs if you are if you have four categories then four outputs and all right so i hope you like this particular video please do subscribe the channel if you are not already subscribed i'll see you in the next video have a great day thank you one all bye bye